welcome you to this seventh IBOS course in Zurich, the fifth time now in Technopark. Special pleasure also to welcome Rainer Otto, <laughs> who will not part, uh, be part of the teaching body. Uh, he's sort of retired, but he was one of the founding members of IBOS, as was uh, Enzo yeah. Durante, founded in Zurich. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, please, Alex. Uh, okay. Welcome for your first talk. Okay. Yeah. So, um, dear Christoph, uh, dear colleagues, uh, before I start with my first talk, I would like to uh, use this opportunity to say thank you to you, Christoph. It's the seventh time that you are organizing this EBIS course and you always uh, perform a great job. So. Uh, it's a good possibility also to transfer the uh, good wishes of our current president, Helmut Matja, and Jack Challens, who contributed to this program. He did a lot for the organizing, too. And maybe I can get the talk? Okay, so uh, the first talk is about uh, Birates, and um, we have a Birates committee member, it's uh, Liz Morris here. And uh, I would like to say at this point, I have to say many thanks to both uh, Alan Mandelson, the chair of the ACR Pirates Ultrasound Committee for Ultrasound, and to Helmut Matja, who also contributed. And uh, they gave me uh, the allowance just to present this talk, and they uh, based this on the draft versions. So if you remind uh, the older days, we had several versions of uh, Pirates, and we hope that the next version will come out definitely in uh, <coughs> 2014. So the actual um, statements are just draft statements, and I hope that you will find these draft statements again in the final version. So my outline is to uh, give you the idea of what will happen in the new Pirates, and these are the major chapters that are part of the pirates and what has changed compared to the last version. We have a similar outline, however, for example, the boundary zone is now in the margins chapter or feature and we have uh, some of the surrounding tissue now in associated features and some topics of the uh, special uh, cases have changed. You know that anatomy is important and the new Byrds edition will also show some statements on uh, anatomy. You know about these uh, 8 to 20 segments and you know the significant structure <coughs> is the most significant structure that is very hard to see is the terminal duct lobular unit where the cancers develop and you know about the blood supply and this should if you just a, a little idea about the arteries and about the lymph node system, which is draining on one hand uh, to the contralateral side and on the other hand to the axillary and supraclavicular region. And um, if uh, you're looking at image quality, this is also a new uh, issue in the update of Pirates. Um, you should always list the type and the reason of the previous examinations. Then you should check for technical quality before <coughs> attempting to interpret any imaging uh, examination. And finally, you should define the scope of your examination. Is it targeted or is it whole breast ultrasound? And this is an example that shows you how the image impression changes if you're uh, reducing the frequency and I really like the high frequency in most circumstances however if there's a fibrosis you have a very dangerous uh, impression on the high frequency and it's very harmless with lower frequency so you have to be more flexible and uh, using very very intelligent uh, computed 
uh, compounding, spectral reduction, or harmonic imaging in a combination of advanced imaging. And this is an important statement that fibrosis can simulate a mass and you need additional mammography and additional ultrasound examination to rule out a cancer. So what about the tissue composition? Already the old version had the uh, homogeneous or heterogeneous ground texture and this is very similar in the actual version and I would like to give you an example of this um, very uniformly composed hypoechoic fat lobules or the agogenic connective tissue. And this is a nice panoramic image, uh, imaging that shows you these details. However, um, we also have uh, breast compositions that are mainly agogenic. And I would like to emphasize there are also some patients who present with the uh, hypoechoic uh, fibroclandular structure. So also this happens. And um, if we are going to the heterogeneous uh, definition, the definition is a focally or diffusely uh, variable echotexture with many small areas of increased and on the other hand decreased echogenicity. And uh, there are two questions first. Is this due to scanning technique? And I will show you that this can be produced by scanning technique and it lowers definitely the sensitivity in the range of 10 to 20 percent according to current studies. And here we have a, an example of the heterogeneous structure. I hope you can see all the details. Maybe we can lower the light a little bit. And uh, here we see the ducts. We have hypoechogenic um, fibroclamplar tissues. And um, what I want to show you now is that with and without compression, and uh, again with reducing the frequency from high frequency to lower frequency, you will have a completely different appearance. So again, the idea is use flexible your methods. And uh, here we have a patient with a uh, hmm, two to three ACR density and look at these hypoechoic area uh, we can see here and if you're compressing this hypoechoic area you have a completely normal appearance so you have to be familiar with the physics and the major advices go on with the compression if you have a heterogeneous echo structure and other alternative would be using here um, elastography. So this is an important advice. And now we come to the feature analysis of the mass. And it's still a space occupying three-dimensional lesions with all these criteria you know from the old version. And um, masses can be distinguished from the normal anatomic structures by just rotating the transducer. That's an easy way to make this differentiation. And these are the old features from the last uh, Byrds version. And I can promise you that there will be a lot more beautiful images. And if we look at the big three features of a mass, that's shape, orientation, and margins. And um, especially with margins, um, the new Byrds update will focus on just circumscribed or not circumscribed because it is not so important which of these um, minor criteria the descriptors apply. And here, uh, this means that the quantification uh, of the Byrds criteria has to be reshaped also from the uh, industry because some things change. And for example, the boundary zone now will no longer persist the boundary zone around lesion will go into the um, margin criteria and it's typically the hyper echogenic invasion rim that is part of the tumor sometimes it's just fibrosis but it's now uh, included in the margin criteria and we have uh, here some um, echo pattern descriptors nothing has changed with anechoic hyper hypoechoic or isoechoic but the um, complex mass is now a complex cystic and solid uh, lesion. And if you have other component 
that are not unechoic but a little hypoechoic, uh, it will be a mixed hyper hypoechoic lesion. You will see all the details in the uh, outprints, so I can go on and uh, focus on the posterior acoustic features, and nothing really has changed with these descriptors. Here are some calcifications. In most cases, you will not see any calcification, but if they are present, it's a different definition compared to the mammographic statement. And um, I would like to give you some examples. Here we have a typical macrocalc, which is larger than 0.5 millimeters. Here you can see very small, tiny microcalcifications here in the uh, peripheral area of a cyst. And uh, sometimes you see a Doppler artifact if you apply Doppler in these calcifications. And here you can see um, microcalcs with a shadowing, so maybe it's just macrocalc within a fibroadenoma. And if you're able to detect these microcalcs within the three-dimensional volume of the breast, you can use it as a target. And it's an easy way to make a large core needle biopsy or in this case a vacuum assisted biopsy just to assess the microcalcs. It's easier compared to the stereotactic approach which is a standard approach in most circumstances. But sometimes you can make a shortcut if you have a very high resoluting ultrasound system. Here comes associated features and um, these are the criteria of uh, uh, associated finders, no effect of mass, and this list can be reduced to three major criteria. First, architectural changes, second, vascularity, and third, and this is a new feature, elasticity assessment. There will be a very simple approach, but this is what happened in associated um, findings, and I would like to give you an example what would be a complete assessment. Here we have a lady and uh, a slight irregularity, asymmetry. If you look at the ultrasound here, we have a shadowing. And it's definitely uh, using here modern advanced technology uh, lesion. And this lesion in 3D double is an irregular lesion with speculations on one hand and a very intense uh, shadowing on the other hand. This is thin slice tomography. And in uh, the elastography, we see it's hard. The whole area is hard, and therefore we don't think it's fibrosis. We want to see what is the diagnosis, and the diagnosis in this case was lobular cancer. And this mammographic finding was completely stable. Over four years, only ultrasound made the diagnosis with this complete assessment. So, if you look at the details, uh, the shape was irregular, it was not parallel to the surface, it was a not circumscribed margin, and so on. And you have to list all these details to come to a final category. And in this case, there was associated CLIS. So again, the associated features and uh, the update today is the addition of elasticity. And we only have th three descriptors. It's just soft, intermediate, and hard, hard or stiff. And this helps you for a quite good assessment of these criteria. And um, this is the same lady. And look at the contralateral side. Here we have a very tiny lesion, but it has developed a little bit in size. And if you look now, at these criteria. Here are the panoramic image, uh, the power doppler, a little hypervascularization in the periphery. It's an impression of a benign lesion, definitely. And it's not really hard, it's intermediate, well, looking at the elasticity. But now here comes the 3D thin slice tomography. And what you see is a distorted TDLU. And if you see distorted TDLUs, so DCIS is in the differential, in the spectrum of differentials, and in this case, the diagnosis was uh, DCIS. So only the 3D um, architectural changes showed you the right way, and whenever there is one feature suspicious, you should go on with um, 
making a diagnosis using histology. And here we see again what has changed with the associated features. Um, there are other things had, that have changed. For example, no effect of a mass is a new criterion. Disruption of anatomic planes is a new criterion and elasticity assessment. And looking here at the stiffness information, um, you only just use uh, the qualitative approach. You can make uh, lesions, uh, uh, lesion analysis on a quantitative base, but the final assessment for virus is just stiff, um, intermediate, and soft. And in this lady, you see here a cancer. This little lesion um, is a very stiff lesion and showing you the MR, you see it's enhancing and it looked like a cancer but finally the histology was regressive papilloma. So special cases, one thing, the cyst is now a special case. The last um, virus version did not uh, mention the cyst and it's the most frequent finding. So now it's a, a special case in all the other uh, cases you know from the old version and here for example uh, um, uh, a lymph node with an uh, increase of size of the parenchyma and a corresponding metastasis so also lymph nodes are part of uh, this chapter. Reporting system um, if you are analyzing a lesion you should uh, start with shape margins and orientations of a mass for example so first use the category, then use the descriptors and integrate ultrasound with the other modalities and clinically and finally you have to come again like in the old versions to a final assessment category and a recommendation and um, here we have a case um, with a lady she had a little increase, maybe a little increase of this um, uh, scar-like lesion and it has not much changed in ultrasound um, it could have been a scar, but MRI clearly showed us, this is a 3 Tesla MRI, here we have an uh, enhancement and we have additional foci. And now coming back to ultrasound, you are able to delineate these foci, so you have to bring all together and second uh, line, second look ultrasound can um, specify uh, what we would have uh, thought to be a harmless cyst at the first looking at this image. And uh, here are again our descriptors and um, what has also changed. We had a, uh, a course of um, rendering starting with the imaging descriptors then adding uh, context conditions or channel rules and then on a very intuitive approach come to the numeric pirates assessment category. But now it's not so strict the recommendation. It was very strict before, short time follow up, by three, six months. Now you have more flexibility if you're uh, familiar with the system. And we have now uh, the frequencies for virus 4A, it's up to 10%, 4B, it's up to 50%, and 4C, up to 94%, that are now stated in this. Um, version and let me summarize there will be uh, e editions electronic editions printed versions of this new update um, it's important to check the technical quality in the beginning and um, appreciate especially the um, online observations this is normal in Europe but it's important for the US friends and you should anticipate technical advances advanced ultrasound techniques and analyzing a lesion use the feature analysis in the way I showed you and uh, here are the take home messages first use the state of the art fundamental and advanced ultrasound techniques second analyze and communicate ultrasound findings in correlation with other modalities and the time course and third the update ultrasound will come definitely wait for it and use it. So thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>